So basically, if we are in C shape, let's say, for F major. So I'm playing an F major chord, and I'm playing it in C shape. It resembles a C major open chord, right? That's dope, and then I can like make it a major seven just by taking my middle finger up. I can make it into a minor seven. Also C shape. I'm oriented around the same root on the A string. You can see all these chords. I make a dominant seven. They're all in C shape. Okay, they're all based off of the same root in the same position. Okay, now that accounts for all of our seventh chords as well. Obviously, if I made it a dominant nine, we would cover that as well. But let's try to extrapolate even further from this. All of my scales exist in C shape too. You know them if you did the chord program is fifth string back form. Right, and then obviously we extend it with the GMI content to be two octaves. The way I was taught, we didn't bother, we just stayed in position, but I would play up to the high E string. And then back down. But the point I'm trying to make here is that my system, my five positions of caged, which again are universal to any key, and so work equally well in any key, not only account for chord types, but also account for all of my major scales. So I might play, uh, in, in my line of thinking, C shape for F major. I could go into A shape. I could go to G shape. So again, I'm playing F major and G shape. And you can play an F major scale. Which you guys know is six string back form, okay? I learned it a little bit differently, but same idea again, okay? You can play any mode if you wanted to in, again, G shape. Let's say I wanted to play F Dorian in G shape. Again, I'm orienting myself at the exact same root. All I'm doing is making the alterations to that major scale to make it a Dorian mode. So in other words, flatting the third and flatting the seventh. your arpeggios in any of these shapes. To make my point, I'll do a major seven arpeggio. Ah, that was nasty, but... Okay, so again, now I'm playing seven chords, I'm playing major seven arpeggios, you can do dominant seven arpeggios, you can do any kind of arpeggio, you can do all of your modes, you can do all of your scales in any capacity. Each of which, essentially, to sort of like most sort of broadly define this, uh, each of which can be found, any given technique can be found, in any of those given five shapes, okay? And so as I'm moving around the fretboard, I'm using those five shapes to orient myself always. And this goes to, a couple of you guys mentioned like wanting to do chord melodies. This is especially useful for people like yourselves who are having to sort of like navigate to particular regions of the fretboard in order to accommodate playing a certain melody on top of the chords, right? You sometimes have less options, especially on this instrument of all things, in terms of where you can play a melody and a chord underneath it. You are, sometimes you're boxed into doing it in a very particular way. It's important to understand that wherever you are on the fretboard, you can ex execute any given sound, any chord, any arpeggio, any scale. And to have that level of sort of um, fluidity is essential to all of you guys who uh, emphasize wanting to learn how to improvise.